B-Link has introduced a brand new line of mini PCs called Max. So this brings up an important question, B-Link Pro or Max? Which is almost as critical as the question Barbie or Oppenheimer? Yep, one for the ages. The answer's Ken by the way, he's so dreamy. But who is Max and why should you care? You'll have to wait until after the ad spot to find out. The Ezus Rec Experts screen recorder is an all-in-one solution for recording everything on your screen, whether it's online meetings, gameplay, tutorials, and more. Rec Experts supports 4K and 60fps in various video formats, and there are plenty of additional features, including a simple video editor to clean up your recording. Give it a test run with the link in the video description. Most of the CPUs and mini PCs have configurable power limits, or TDP, whatever you want to call it. But since high-end chips use a lot of power at their max configuration, they also generate a lot of heat. And that's a problem to get rid of in such a tiny box. So what manufacturers do, both in the mini and laptop space, is lower the max power limit and, booyah, less heat to get rid of. But also, less performance, which is rarely, if ever, mentioned. And I'm sure the name of this mini PC has given it away already. The B-Link Sur 5 Max powers the Ryzen 5800H at its maximum configuration of 54 watts compared to the 35 watts with the B-Link Sur 5 Pro using the same CPU. And you can get this Max Mini for the exact same price as the Pro starting at US$419 for the 516GB combo. Actually, scratch that. The Pro has dropped to US$379 since I reviewed it. Oh. So, uh... How does Max compare for an extra $40 US? That, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're going to find out. If you've seen the contents of one B-Link Mini, you've seen them all. Dual HDMI, monitor mount, manual, and power supply. The exterior design of Max is similar to Pro. The biggest difference is on the top, which on Max looks like felt material. Max is made of plastic, just like Ken, except for the bottom plate, which is metal. Very important for that to be stiff. I've got to say, it would have been really nice if the Max series started off with a bang by using an all-metal chassis. Well, what can I say? I've learned that I never get what I want. Lately, I've been waking up every morning in a cold sweat, shouting, NEW PHANTOM CANYON! It's a recurring nightmare I'm seeing a therapist about. Where were we? Oh right, build quality is pretty good with solid plastic and a decent finish. The ports are very similar between the Pro and the Max. The front is the same, dual USB 3, 10 gigabit, USB-C with display out, and audio jack. The rear has gigabit LAN, USB 3, 10 gigabit, and USB 2. The only change is DisplayPort replaces one of the dual HDMI outputs on the Pro. Alrighty, let's have a look inside. Four screws and pull on the rubber to pop that lid off. Here you can install a 2.5 inch SATA drive for some of that extra sweet sweet storage. The SSD cooler has a few more screws to remove to get into the guts of the system. The memory is AZW branded, which is the company that manufactures this mini. And the NVMe drive has the branding sticker peeled off, but it's a crucial P3+. And underneath the SSD is the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Both the Pro and Max come with Windows 11 Pro, and both work fine with Ubuntu if you want to dual boot or use Linux exclusively. The 8-core Ryzen 5800H may seem old now with the 7000 series out, but it holds up surprisingly well in CPU workloads. Not so much in graphics. Still, this is a powerful mini PC for various usage cases. Let's see how the new Max 54W model performs in the benchmarks before I test some games. In single core, there's little difference between the Pro and the Max. Both are at the bottom of the chart, but still, plenty of grunt for most users. If we compare against the latest generation Ryzen CPU I've tested, the Max is 8% behind. But in multi-core, Max shoots up the chart with a healthy lead of 20% over the Pro. And comparing against the best performing new generation, that's 13% behind for Max. In the video encoding test, it's back down to the bottom, but beats the Pro by 6%. And 13% behind the 7735HS, which is exactly the same margin as the Cinebench result. So the extra wattage gives a decent uptick in multi-core performance compared to the Pro. But that's about it. In the DX11 graphics benchmark, there was almost no improvement. Not even half a percent for the Max. 
I've left the single channel score from a 7735HS to show you how similarly it performs to the 5800H with just one stick of RAM. But keeping to the same comparison unit as with the CPU benchmarks, the 5800H is 36% behind. And in DX12, there was no improvement over the Pro. And again, pretty similar to single channel performance of the 7735HS, and 39% behind with a proper dual channel setup. I've taken one of my 4K video projects into Adobe Premiere to see how well the 5800H does and it's reasonably responsive at scrubbing across the timeline. We're running the desktop at 4K and the preview resolution is half. It's not ideal compared to my BC desktop, but I could edit my 4K videos on this mini. Export times aren't too bad either. Alright, it's time for a new game benchmark. Here's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart running at 1080p very low without any image upscaling techniques. Just a raw performance showcase. Apart from Ratchet's missing limbs, it's running too slow. With the FSR 2.1 upscaling technique enabled, the game becomes playable at the lowest settings. I also wanted to see if there was any benefit to the higher power limit in other games and the answer is... it depends. For a CPU heavy workload like Valorant, there was a very noticeable increase in frame rate over the Pro. In Forza, no noticeable difference. Same with Elden Ring. And again with Cyberpunk. And one more time with God of War. But emulation puts more stress on the CPU and there's a 10% improvement in Breath of the Wild. There's around a 15% improvement in PS3's Wipeout. The same with Skate. And Motorstorm. Okay, so the idle power draw of 8 watts is around what's expected and the 19 watts extra power limit translates into an additional 20 watts max power draw from the wall. This additional heat needs to go somewhere and the noise level has jumped to compensate. How loud is the max? Well, more than an Intel i7 NUC, so that's pretty noisy when putting the Mini under load. It's also a big jump up from the Sur 5 Pro. The CPU temp maxed out a little higher than the Pro at 92C. The cooling solution for the NVMe drive does its job, with the drive temp staying low during all tests. While Crucial's P3 Plus is a Gen 4 NVMe drive, the Ryzen 5000 series only supports Gen 3. As expected, the P3 Plus performs well as a Gen 3 drive. If you'd seen my previous B-Link Sur 5 Pro review, you might have seen that I had Wi-Fi issues. I don't know if that was just my mini or across the board, but this Max unit had no issues. The B-Link Sur 5 Max gives you the full, fat, 54 watt experience at the same price the Pro launched, 
with an average of 15% improvement in CPU limited workloads. These B-Link boxes are some of the best at keeping NVMe SSDs cool. That being said, it's still a Ryzen 5000 series CPU which is outdated, especially on the integrated graphics side. It doesn't come with a metal case, and the extra performance comes with more fan noise. There is plenty of competition at this price point with newer generation CPU options, so it's a late arrival to the table. If you're looking for more graphics performance, check out my review of the GMK Tech Nutbox K2, which comes in at an attractive price point. Cheers!